Okay. Uh, this is the planning board meeting, uh, November 6th uh, at 7 p.m. And pursuant to Governor Healy's March 29th, 2023 order extending the temporary provisions pertaining to the open meeting law, this meeting of the Sutton, Sutton Planning Board is in a hybrid format and is being recorded. The recording will be available on the town's website and YouTube channel. Let's start with a, a roll call. Let's see who's present. Bill Talcott here. Bob Lodges present. Mike Deegan here. Wally Baker here. And I have a note here that says Erica um, is zooming in with us. She just joined. She just joined. Okay. Okay. He's still connecting, so it might take a minute. Okay. And Scott Paul. You should be able to ask Erica now. Bob. Is absent. Yeah. Right. Erica, are you there? Can you hear us? <clears throat> Looks like she lost connection again. <laughs> She might be having a little technical difficulties, but I'll let you know when I see you online, Bob. Okay. Uh, the first public hearing at 7 p.m. is for 27 Worcester Providence Turnpike. Uh, it's been continued from October 23rd. Drake Petroleum has a site plan review in Route 146 Overly District Special Permit. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, Drew Garvin with Bowler Engineering. Um, civil engineer for the project. I also have Kevin Doyle uh, representing the applicant on Zoom. Okay. Um, just to catch up from the last meeting, I'm, I'm just gonna share my screen and put the site plan on now, just put it in the background. Um, if you recall, it's a gas expansion site uh, high-speed diesel specifically um, we last hearing we went through many items and uh, and uh, addressed them uh, including some waivers for disturbance of slopes uh, car queuing for the existing drive-through um, and the main um, items as I see it anyway that were left open uh, to address with the board was uh, some correspondence with Mass DOT good getting their approvals uh, for this expansion we are not uh, we are not improving the actual accesses themselves or doing any work in the right of way however they wanted some uh, analysis of the increase in trips that would be caused uh, by this expansion for the for tractor trailer truck specifically um, and we were able to meet with them uh, virtually uh, myself and the applicant and uh, as well as a, a traffic consultant and presented them with some uh, they asked for trips kind of pre and post construction and what that increase looked like uh, the short story is a, it, it increased the trips by approximately 90, uh, 90 trips uh, in the peak hour, uh, and um, or that was overall throughout the day. They were they were accepting accepting of those of that trip analysis. We supplied it to Jen and the board um, as part of that meeting and informed her that we did meet with them. And they subsequently got back to us saying they would like a, uh, let's say, permit modification to the existing permit. Um, include, and it's something <clears throat> Mass DOT has a system now where you file all this electronically. Um, so they asked us to do so, and as, as well as uh, include two other additional items, one being uh, an exhibit showing that a W. B67, the largest tractor trailer you can get, uh, can exit that onto the um, onto Route 146 safely via the existing access, which we have created, um, as well as uh, 
what's going to be this plan uh, addressing a, the, a question of whether there was parking on site proposed for the tractor trailer, which there are, are two part of this um, submittal. So we, we haven't formally pulled the trigger on that. We, we haven't finalized, I should say, the complete um, electronic filing process. We've you go through a registration process, which we've started, but I didn't want to finalize it until after this hearing and we, you know, all the items were kind of on the table but I don't expect that to be uh, a difficult lift as far as getting through DOT. Um, and I believe Jen has uh, sort of conditioned it in her latest uh, <coughs> letter uh, as a condition to, to get their okay. appropriate just approvals. And now that we know what those look like, we didn't know what they looked like at the last hearing, so now we do. Just one question on that, sure. not a question, it's just, I'm. Um, uh, little surprised that they would look at the size of the vehicles exiting only that you already have two pumps there that have been you know me I mean, too you're not expecting larger trucks based on this correct you know so, so it, it might just it, be a, a standard it might just be a reflex yeah. you yeah. know yeah. Dot, dot your eye cross your t kind of thing right so i agree i was i but we're just going to provide whatever they would like yeah. um and i don't i wasn't part of the original um right application so i don't know if that was done or not and it was a different, you know, different world then. So, um, it's not a problem. We've we've proven it out again, uh, in theory. So uh, it's I don't, again, I don't expect it. And you already had the two parking spots proposed. Right. Yeah, proposed that was yeah that wasn't an ad. We we it was, we've done that. Right. Uh, just as general layout, when when the sites allow the room for it, we like to supply it, um, just for ease of. Uh, options to go into the you know store and and get a bite or whatever it is that the truckers want to do. Right. So. Okay. So, so that, yeah. Um, again, I don't expect that to be an issue. And then the final uh, issue was uh, just dealing with uh, appropriate screening and and kind of buffering to the uh, residents to the south east uh, plan right. Um, and if you remember, we went through uh, <clears throat> kind of some iterations at the last hearing, as well as some comments from both Jen and the uh, peer reviewer, Graves Engineering. Uh, we extended the fence, kind of improved some plantings, and it was suggested uh, that there was a lack of evergreens at the last hearing that uh, Jen in particular thought was a good idea to put on the resident abutting side of the fence outside of our uh, work, as it were, uh, and we kind of agreed to six to eight trees, ran it by our landscape architect in, at Bowler, which we have in-house. Um, we added six trees, evergreen trees, to the back side of that fence to provide a full season screening uh, improvement, um, thinking that that addressed it. Uh, Jen did go out later uh, after that and uh, kind of had additional concerns and issues. Right. Um, and we just as a, as a quick, this all happened, you know, obviously over the last week or so right. uh, in preparation for this. We did try to address that uh, by saying we could add perhaps five more trees. Um, you know, it just, did, just in an effort to limit, we didn't just kind of want this endless chase of right. plantings. So we just kind of capped it at a number of five additional to the six that we already original, pre, originally proposed. Um, so, and if you recall, we created a 100-foot buffer easement um, to that. The pavement, that was another thing item that came up. The pavement was not in that 100-foot strip. That was one of the things that came up. That was confirmed. Um, so we did create that easement in a draft 81X plan that can be recorded once we're approved here. Um, so, you know, in light of all this, I, I wanted to see where the board uh, felt. I don't know. I, I assume Jen shared all this with you. Um, and I didn't know what your feelings were on our screening provided to the residents this evening. I, mean, I see this is the last item right. to address. So right. I mean, I would just say, like I said, we've only seen these the last few days. Um, be honest with you, some of these have come sure. in, you know, the last 
four or five days. Um, sure. I mean, I, and I think I've seen some pics. I don't know if they were supplied by Jen or by of, of the site itself. Yeah, that was a, that oh, whole was that your packet was Jen's packet. Okay. Yes. Because it, it is interesting. I mean, I, I when you see the the pictures of it, when you talk about the boom, and then above that is the fence now, from what right. I can tell, and then you're going to be taking down the boom, and you can't right. really replace it going back 40 feet because it's no. in wetlands, from what I correct. Right. So that. You know, that's a so to put another six foot fence there, we're kind of losing eight or ten feet of privacy or 50, I don't know, you know how big, I mean, how tall, you know, ten feet of privacy, which is, you know, I think one of the things we talked about last time trying to, for these residents who are now going to be a lot 40, 50 feet closer to these trucks, you know, privacy for sight line and noise. I mean, so those, you know, sure. those are just, I know we talked about last time slightly those concerns and, you know, they seem to still possibly be there. I'm mean, just that's my yeah. And just to reiterate, no one else. Um, we are still uh, yeah. even with the expansion over 350 or, or over 300 feet, close to 350 right. feet from uh, the residents themselves um, of of you know mature wooded area. Right. So you know, I, I and and there haven't been abutters that have come to the to these hearings meaning that noise has not been an issue to date. Um, I, understanding that we are moving towards them, but right. again, I don't, with, with the improvements we're proposing, I don't, in my opinion, don't feel that it's going to be a significant uh, increase in noise and impact to those residents. Right. And I, I mean, yeah. we're, we're trying to put our best foot forward right. here. No one's trying to, yeah, no. uh, you know, uh, I know we talked, it. we talked about last week at the meeting we had, a couple of weeks ago, you know, we asked if there were residents online here to see you. you right. want it, and it ha surprisingly, it wasn't. You yeah. know, so they don't. I mean, they don't seem so far to be too. Yes, in my under, experience, you know, they would be. They they would, would if be, there was a problem, they would be heard. We would expect yeah. to be seen. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> let me ask yeah. Wally Eddie. Uh, well, I noticed a document that we we just got here, uh, listing the traffic. It says Southboro Gas Station Convenience Store. Uh, that's probably because my I, I work out of the Southboro office, so I assume it was. Well, I just. Yeah. I don't like erroneous documentation. Sure. Let me put it that way. I think I just want to make sure we really are talking about Sutton. We and just we, we not are. superimposing somebody else's numbers. Absolutely on not. Another no. geographic location. And, and again, I, I'll that that'll be buttoned up when we again formalize this through the electronic DOT system. But um, it was vetted by DOT in that in that meeting, and they did agree. Okay. These are the numbers they were given. Yes, okay. that document itself. That's correct. Right. Now, my other concern you have addressed was getting DOT on board. Uh, so I guess we could condition that to some right. to some extent. So because I don't want us to do something and then DOT says no. Yeah, in Jen's response, she has a minimum condition related to approval over this project by Mass DOT. Okay. So that is a condition that she's already written okay. in there. Because okay. a lot of times we'll have, um, you might have a, a meeting with them virtually or in person, but you know, ultimately we'd like to get a yes. document from them saying we, you know, not that we don't believe you had well, the meeting, understood. obviously, but totally you know, as a just condition, for the records, we'd like. You know, yeah. in my experience, that's not. It's not that um, abnormal to, to yeah. condition that and not have it. You know, at right you know, by the time we close these meetings. Right. So okay. yep. um, if you're, if the board's comfortable with it, that would be ideal. Okay. Bill? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, just to reiterate, so last time you were here was two weeks ago. We were looking for a clean comment from Jen. Um, I know she wrote a her comments for October uh, November 3rd, so right. it d didn't give him much time for you to turn around and clean it up. It doesn't look like it's um, all that much, but I'd still like to see a clean letter from Jen. Mm -hmm. And the gr and then the piece we talked about is the, obviously the, the approval from the uh, state DOT. We just talked about that. And the last one was the Gray's letter. And the Gray's letter came in today. It was dated, dated November 3rd. Mm -hmm. uh, what's that? What's that? Five. We're seeing it for the first Five. time. We're seeing it for the first time. <clears throat> and it looks like the only issue that he has, reading it briefly or quickly, is the they make mention of a 100-foot-wide residential buffer easement. 
GEI is no issue with you. I think we're talking about the same thing. We're talking yes. about this all rolls into the same, uh, the buffer between the, the new piece and the uh, re residence. Now, I joked last meeting that maybe there's no residence here because the board did such a good job back in uh, 2009. Was that what it was? Earlier than that, I think it was 2006. 2006. I must have just got off the board then. So, because um, I joked that, but maybe there's a lot of truth to that. Now, maybe the board, maybe the residents who all got notified said that um, this board has done their job in the past and they hoped this, maybe they just expect us to do our job in the future without any prompting or prodding from them. So I think it's important for us to make sure that the buffer is adequate. Now, tell me if I'm wrong, Drew. Now, I, I drove around the site before, but I, the other day I actually took a good peek around and I walked out and I saw him. Uh, so I have a, a little better understanding, and, and shame on me for not, for not having as good understanding in prior meetings. But I didn't realize that the berm, so the berm's going away, right? Correct. And the cleared area is being pushed 110 feet? Correct. To the south, south, southeast? Yeah, southeast. It's kind of the North Arrow's cockeyed on this plan. I, I like to clarify with saying plan right, but yes. Okay, plan right. And then, and I noticed that those tr those existing pine trees, what kind of pine trees are there? Are those the existing ones in the buffer? Because those are really nice. I'm, I'm not saying nice as you, you... The new plantings. Well, they look fairly new. Uh, I believe they're white pines. I'm not... Those are white pines. They, not, they got... I'm not an expert, so don't hold me to but it. They, but they... Uh, they're doing well there. They are doing really well, and they are growing. Uh, there, there are branches upon branches, and they are thick. Those are really effective. Um, so, my kudos to those. But it can, so anyway, so if we move 110 feet closer to the residence, we lose the berm, and then if I'm not mistaken, we're going to be taking down 20 of these pine trees. Uh, I don't know about 20 pine trees. We'd be, I, I okay. don't have to count. Maybe 20 trees. 20 trees. Yeah. 20 trees in this little buffer zone. Mm -hmm. And we're only adding back. We had six, and you're adding five more. I mean, so we're losing, we're losing the buffer. I mean, we're losing the berm. We're losing 20 trees, but we're picking up 11 trees. But we're also going to be 110 feet closer to these residents than it was. Uh, I think, I'm just adding this in there, I think that, um, speaking for myself, I, I think we'd be doing a disservice to the members of the community in that area by the fact that we're 110 feet closer without the berm, we should at least require the same amount of plantings as was back in 2006, at least, as to have them now just because they're closer. And I, if we could put a berm, can we put a berm back? We can uh, create a, a slight earth berm there. I'm calling it two to three feet. We haven't, um, I did do a little exercise on this. I haven't fully designed it out, but we do have a little bit of room, as you can see, to the limit of work and clearing that we're proposing now, which is sensitive because as you know, this is wetland buffer and, and have we, we have already gone through conservation. So <coughs> within our area of work now, we can kind of create a little hump and sit the uh, fence and plantings on that berm. And, and I know, okay, I, I'm all for that. And I also know as a board, we acquiesced about the sound wall. Seeing this, I mean, I, I think I could stay with that. With obviously put whatever fence, what was the fence? Was it six foot high? Yes, white vinyl, solid. Um, and then, obviously, I think one of the conditions was about the sound, and you know, hopefully, whatever other plantings are going to come up with, if that's so, be decide to pursue that, um, would be enough with the berm, with the fence, that the the sound barriers wouldn't be necessary. But I know we reserved the light and one of the conditions to potentially require that down the road. 
So, Bill, you want to have as many trees. When yeah, they're all done, we should have, the, the trees should stay. I, I think we should have as many trees, if not more trees, than what was required back in 2006. So if we're taking out 20 and we're only putting in 11, mm -hmm. I think we're, we need to double. Or you, if you said there's a landscape engineer or architect, I think they call them architects, not engineers. Landscape architects, yes. Um, to come up with a plan that would would duplicate the duplicate the barrier visually and sound wise that's there now to what will be there when this project is completed um, because <laughs> none of us want to hear you know we don't want to hear complaint. I mean, uh, we shouldn't say that. We <laughs> obviously, we want to hear from residents, but we, we're here to represent the residents, and it, it's a little difficult to complain after the fact even. But I I'm th I'm, I know I, j I was joking, but maybe <laughs> this board did such a damn good job 16 years ago that they didn't feel um, necessary to come today. So we'll, we'll take credit. Uh, Bob will? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and for myself, um, I um, everyone's looking south, and I'm looking uh, for myself. I'm looking north. Um, it's a it's, it's a great opportunity uh, for your business. Obviously, um, the valley is going to have more and more traffic uh, coming north and uh, you should be able to take advantage of that so I appreciate you came originally there it didn't you didn't know then it was going to get so busy and mm -hmm. potentially even busier than it is right now I'm I'm concerned about the uh, uh, the DOT and that off ramp it's a it's a quick one um, and it's got it's got to stay safe I, I hope it's no big deal but I also drove out in how are they going to do that and make that thing a little bit longer so they can access? Because um, people are coming up off the hill, and they're they're not decelerating; <laughs> they're accelerating. And uh, I'm uh, I just want to make sure that we have a DOT uh, with a, a clean bill that this is going to be safe with uh, with more traffic that you expect to have there. And that's that, going to be important. That came up in the meeting, um, and, and I think Jen pointed it out possibly the last time we met, that there was, during the original approval process, uh, some allowance made. Again, I wasn't part of it, but for that acceleration lane, which is, the, right. which is what people are concerned about. I think that is part of the exercise they requested from us with this turning. I know it's more than just turning on and accelerating on, yeah. but it is – you know that acceleration lane and i don't know uh, none of us are traffic engineers here but it's you know in the neighborhood of 550 feet which i consider a decent amount i don't know what would normally be required i don't know if it fell 50 feet short and it's normally 600. they seem satisfied as long as we can get on make that turn on with the biggest truck available again i'm surprised that this this exercise didn't already happen uh it's the same use it's the same you know we're going to increase the trucks with from the original two stalls to now having five, but I, 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 the animal still seems to be the same to me. But um, we're going to provide them whatever they want and get those approvals, and that's part of the um, the condition that Jen wrote in here that you know we wouldn't be able to open without them. So, um, right, well, yeah, and I that think it's covered. And that uh, that ramp, uh, that access, um, you run into water. There's some. There's a reason that it doesn't keep going um, and going back because mm -hmm. I'm so old uh, there used to be uh, you used to be able to have a U-turn on 146 right um, uh -huh. and uh, I remember clearly um, they had a second uh, accident there and there was a fatality uh, uh, and John Hebert was the police chief and he went over everybody and said, I'm in charge of safety, and he's, he just put the jersey down and said, no, there'll be no more U-terms there. That's just, it just isn't safe. It's just a place that um, um, people are moving, and they're, yeah. tra they're traveling 60 miles an hour. They've, right. they've left the light, they've come up the hill, they're, 
they're uh, they're on the way for the Mass Pike probably, um, yeah. but we have to make sure that um, if DOT doesn't do it, uh, something's going to have to make sure it's safe. So no, I'm just concerned, concerned about that. I, I really like I'd like tonight to, to um, for me I want to make sure that um, we hear from them uh, as as we move forward in the buffer stuff. Uh, I think you're with you, Bill. We have to we got to support the resident. We got to take care of them or they'll come back at us for doing not doing a good job. Go ahead. Um, one question, Drew. What do, did we expand the fences? Did we expand yes. around? Yes, and that, I was going to point that out as, as part of, uh, you know, improving this buffer or trying to meet what was existing, and it's not the same, quite the same as the original, obviously, but we have expanded that fence and wrapped it around more comprehensively, I'm going to say, around the this proposed improvement okay. to kind of contain that sound better than you know it's just a, a kind of a wood yeah because it's picket stops fence it. that's up there now and it's it's probably about half the length that we that we're proposing okay. today it stops so. it stops in an odd place but I wasn't on the board then so okay. the proposed one stops at an odd place no no no, no yeah. the existing one it just kind of yeah kind of midway is what you're saying yeah, yeah I agree but we're we're clearly and it was it was Graves I think that. Uh, prompted us to, to push it a little bit further. We did have it wrapping around that lower corner, but even wanted it to go a little bit further, even a little further than we proposed. But we kept it where where it is, just for drainage maintenance purposes. If you can, okay. you know, if you look at it, there's a manhole there. We need to. I want to be able to get to that without having to deal with the fence. So, and I felt it, it did its job in light of where the residents are sitting. So. And then just to, just to reiterate, so the important part of the buffer is not just sound, it's not just sight, sure. it's light, light also. Mm -hmm. That'll be a big issue. Because yeah. that's why I'm I'm happy to hear that you mentioned that uh, you might be able to add some berm back, you know, because yes. to me that, you know, when you're seeing these pictures and there's a five to six foot berm there that align with the fence goes, you know, goes up 17, 18 feet. It seems like when we're talking to different sight lines they've been studying, if there is no berm there, the view from the first floor of these houses would be five or six, seven, eight feet over the line and would see the trucks, and, you know. And again, we're trying to at least minimize the light from them coming around, you know, circling around. And maybe that slight little area as we kind of mentioned before, but just any, you know, again, yeah. I'd like to anything that, that can be done to yeah. at least minimize those, I think would be in the right direction because, you know. No, I think I think the way we have it, I don't, I don't see how the headlights can get past that, especially with a, with a slight berming it up. Right. Uh, to help that elevationally, so um, I'd like to think we covered that. Like I said, if, if, if any there, boom can be added, I'd be you know, even yeah. like you said three you know, feet. No, just would, to be clear, that I, was, I wasn't you know, sure that wasn't, could. That, that wasn't designed that way on the original app. I did kind of do some research on this. It was just the way the site was cut into the to the existing land kind of created that. But nonetheless, I understand uh, that it it had its benefit. So right, because I think when you I'm sorry, last thing about when you see it, like when you look into the you know. You see the berm there, so it's just part of what you're seeing. But you know, if you imagine that six foot is down flat, it changes the you know changes the dimension of what you're looking at quite you know quite a bit. So I'm just trying to. So at, as of tonight, um, we've heard from Graves Engineering. Um, we have no, no other input from anyone else from town. Is there anyone that's here publicly that wants to uh, speak, or is there anyone? out in Zoom land that wants to weigh in. Don't see anybody here. Yeah, so, so, um, so we have to make a decision if we want to continue this hearing to, um, we can do it on the 20th at 7 p.m. Um, and wait for um, a news from the DOT that they're fine with this. Um, or do we want to? Well, can I make a request? Yeah. I just, um, I, I guess I'm concerned that we're not going to hear. I don't know the DOT timeline on these things. I'm sure they have a window that they're allowed. Um, and I was, I was hoping that the condition and and the conversations we've had would be, um, you know, enough for the board to be comfortable that we are moving forward with them and we'll get there. Um, we will certainly get their approval before you know we get a certificate of op occupancy or whatever uh, per other permits are 
required for us to open. So I was hoping that would, and that's, I've done that typically on many projects, and I was hoping the board would find that acceptable in this case, as Jen has also laid out. Um, and you're prepared to do whatever they ask you to do to that's make right. that safe. That's right. We've met so, with them. We're, I'm comf I am comfortable on right. the flip side yeah. of what they're asking for. Yeah, we already have it. We are, have already prepared it. We just haven't formally given them right. all the cards yet and let yeah. them sort through their process. And I just don't want – I'm fearful of them holding us up uh, for whatever their process is. It, if – you know, even if it takes two months, we can do still do our the things that we need to do concurrently, and that won't affect us as long as we I can move forward with the board. So between that, and uh, you know, even if the board would find it, you know, to place a condition that we would duplicate the amount of plantings from the original um, filing, if that were um, again, I don't have the exact number. I th oh here's Jen's thing. Um, you know, Jen gave us kind of a snapshot of that original filing, and you know, there's a there's a number of trees there that I think we would be willing to uh, duplicate. I, I also wanted to say, just talking with Kevin, who's on on Zoom, I, I would I think we'd also like to try if we if we can move forward before the winter to even transplant some of those existing plantings which are healthy um, mm -hmm. knowing that maybe they don't all take and we could you know replace them for to get that final number um, you know if 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 the planning board was willing to grant you know to approve this on the condition that we would duplicate those plantings uh, you know on the condition that we would you know and provide that updated plan and along with the grading for the berm um, tonight to move forward, that would be ideal. Okay. I, I have I have no problem with conditioning the the mass DOT piece. I understand that could be time consuming. I I think I would feel feel more comfortable if we had the landscape uh, architect, the renderings and the drawings and the plans in place instead of conditioning it. That's just me. So I, I would prefer to continue the public hearing. I know the applicant certainly wants to move forward, but I just think that's important enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would agree because my home residence, there was a business that came in, and it's amazing what happens to light and sound. Um, and I'm over 200 feet away. And I'm up higher, so that's another, mm -hmm. another whole thing. So I think there is a big significance with the, the trucks and the elevation of the, the barriers, the visual and audio. Uh, I would prefer to see the appropriate documentation. Okay, by the, by the 20th, by the next meeting. By the next meeting, yeah. Figure. Would that be possible to have something on that? Okay. Yeah, really all we're, Just wanna. all we're talking about is the landscape plan. I mean, there might yes. be some domino effect I don't, that aren't okay. coming yeah. to me now. But, yeah, that it's it would not be a difficult uh, task okay. to get that oh, right. revised plan, which is to say mostly the landscape plan as part of the set, improved to, to meet this condition. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, I would just I would second that as well. Um, the mass DOT piece, I know it can certainly take as long as they choose for it to take. But again, as a condition, ultimately, whatever they need to do, you you know, right. would have to come back and try to figure out what you can do. You know, work out that with Absolutely. us. Um, okay. But I agree. We've spent a lot of time on this, mostly looking at that whole piece affecting the neighbors. So it is an important piece, even though, like you said, not many neighbors have expressed much on it. But like I think Bill made a good point. Even when they don't express, we still are here acting on behalf of anyone in town and, you know, to their best interest. And if it was one of my houses, I'd want to, you know, do due diligence to make sure that, they, you know, the impact is as little as possible. So sure. I would agree that um, pushing it to the two weeks, you know, I know even though we, we certainly understand your point that we're trying to move it as quick, but hopefully two weeks won't be oh. that detrimental, but it will, uh, you know, yeah, get and it can, all done. Uh, so I, you, I know, yes, you know, yes, I'm, you know, disappointed, but I understand that's, yeah. that's how we have to do it. Okay. Um, and that will give 
Jen a chance to return and maybe yes. draft up the decision yeah. and all yep. those good things that come yep. along with that. So. Yeah, and she can she can give a clean letter too. And there's yeah. nothing else here. Nope. No. Everything else that uh, that we're doing here is, is going to be approved. There's yeah. There's no other things that that we have more news on. So right. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll entertain a motion to move okay. to seven o'clock on the twentieth. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Okay. I'll second. Brad Wally second it. Okay. Any other discussion? No. Nope. Okay. I'll call for a vote. Bill Talcott, aye. Bob Largess, aye. Mike Gagan, aye. Wally Baker, aye. Check if I'm Eric McCollum, aye. All right. Yeah, she's there. All right. <laughs> is that like a, uh, right. Just to clarify, I know you just did this, but uh, that Monday is the Monday before Thanksgiving. We're all a go. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Had to say it out loud. Yeah. No holidays getting our way. Oh, okay. No, no, that's no. good. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Time, sir. Yeah. And all the I work. I move to close this hearing. Yep. No. Yeah. No, no, just continue it. Oh, we continue it. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All, be, all because of a couple high speed. It's been a lot of work. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Well, good. Where's my agenda there? Hold on. All right. Uh, okay, we have uh, action items. ANR, approval not yep. required. Yep. Division of land on existing driveways. It was none of them. None, nothing, okay. Then we have a site plan waiver, tentative for 352 Manchog Road. Yep. And they're here. Come on up. All right. Hmm. It's good seven. Evening. Good evening. How are we doing, gents? Hey guys. Good. Very good. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for coming in. All right. Um, well, the floor is yours. Welcome yeah, so aboard. this is just the next step you, in this. If you don't mind, guys, sorry, just say your names first so we have uh, them on the record. Tim Herringer, 146 Fitness. I'm Brian Asacker, his partner, 146 Fitness. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Yeah, so we're just looking to uh, finish the process of getting our gym um, approved to move over to the new location. We've been in town here for quite some time. And um, yeah, this is just the next step in uh, getting us to stay in business. As you guys can see, you know, we uh, already had our zoning board of appeals and they all approved us last week. And um, we're asking you guys to, for a waiver of the site plan review, as we understand it, everyone's familiar with it when it was approved for the restaurant, and we're just trying to expedite, trying to open up over there as quick as we can get over there. Okay. Just a question. What, what is the main reason you're looking, just to more space or just Oh, no, we're, we're being, uh, there's a new owner of our current building. Oh, okay. okay. And he's putting a new business in okay. and has asked us to vacate. Okay. Yeah, we didn't want to leave. We didn't want to leave. <laughs> so is, it, is this the one on the southbound side of 140, your existing one? Is Our that? current location? Yeah. Oh, we're on the northbound side, right oh, between okay. uh, Blackstone Landscaping and the Yeah, um, yeah, it was the, the hairdresser company. there, right? Was that the, um, was, there, was there this asphalt guy there? That was a paint store before. Oh, you're going way back. Way back. P &M yeah, that paving. was a paint and wallpaper was. store. Yep. P and M yep. paving, and then the, remember they they were in front of us. Okay. We made right, so this for a bathroom out of there 20 years ago. Is that what it was? Yeah. It no. was the, the owner yeah. was Ron Lukashevitz. You guys may have worked with him. He he, I think he built that building and and put his paint and wallpaper store in it. Yep. Yeah. You're right. So he finally just sold it last month, and now the uh, the new owner is uh, Sean. Uh, uh, Lorden. Lorden, he runs um, concierge per, uh, physical therapy up, up the, street. the street where the Anytime Fitness is on the so south side. It's going to move there and we're going to move here and then hopefully all parties continue <laughs> to stay in business. Well, I appreciate, I want to support a, a business in town. Thank you. Obviously. Um, that was one of my questions where you it wasn't going to be a second location. This is going to be just this is survival move. for yep. us. Yeah. Okay. You know, how, how does it work? Do you have uh, it's open what were the hours there? so we were 24 hours we're gonna out of respect to the residents we're not gonna carry that over just because there's tenants next door so we'll just be open 5 8 and 9 p or 5 8 5 to 10, to 10 the zoning board approved last week yep okay. and then um everything's really staying the same we have a uh, three there's three rooms in the building that were approved for the restaurant there'll just be gym equipment in there now 
We're not really making any changes of any sort to the infrastructure, really. It's pre pretty simple, just moving the equipment and. Right. Now, the people that uh, uh, have access with a key to get right. into the property, I'm familiar with a, uh, a business in where my business is, and uh, people are there. Uh, I'm amazed. Um, <laughs> they have a key to go in. They uh, love it. You can't just go in and start working out. You have to uh, have access to the place. Um, so, correct. Yeah, we kind of operate it like a kind of like a closed country club until you've signed your contract and gotten your special key you know you no one's allowed in the building and it's right. always locked unless you're a member yep so it works out nice okay all right wally any questions no i think it's good that you're staying in town thank you wally yes we really want to tim was you know, brought up here in sutton yeah i'm uh, a dinosaur now <laughs> we, we, we love it. We've met a lot of great town people. Most of our customers are from town. Oh, good. Mike? Yeah, I know. It sounds like a good, like you said, yeah. we'd like you to stay in town. So we appreciate Thanks, Mike. It. And, uh, okay. Thank you. Bill? Uh, that's 30 to 40 customers a day. Yeah, I mean, if you broke up the 24 hours, you okay. know, usually right. there's three or four to six people in the building on a... Okay. You took the average from the busy to the slow times. There's usually half a dozen people in there. I no, I think that's great. And obviously, we want to keep you in town. Um, I just have two questions. What was the? Um, Why did you have to go in front of the ZBA, the Zoning Board? Of oh, Hotels? the the what building's not zoned for fitness center. So we had to get a special permit uh, to. So be. it's not by right. It was probably a special permit. It was special permit. Okay. And then I'm, I drove by there tonight. Am I, is, this the, is this the building, I'm embarrassed to say this, is it the one right at the Four Corners? Or no. Is it, or is it no. up the road into the... the up that hill. It's, hill. it's the old... It's the old VFW. Yes. Got it. Right. Now, is, okay, so I'm embarrassed. But I'm familiar with that building, and I'm familiar that you can drive around it, right? Yep. Is there, is there a restaurant there now? No, he, he, you guys approved him for his restaurant, right. but when COVID hit, he stopped his plan, and then I think when things open up, he just changed, changed his tact, and I think it sat vacant for a little bit now until we showed up. Is it totally vacant? Yeah. Well, he has residential, three units, uh, apartments on one end, and then we'll yeah. have... Okay. Two thirds, probably. All right. Of the so, okay. Because the, the piece, the, the building I was looking for, that I wasn't familiar with, was the one on the corner. And I, I said, it doesn't look like this. No, it doesn't look, and it doesn't look like this. And I would think there'd be more issues. But anyway, that's fantastic. Uh, I don't see why we as a board would require you to have um, a site plan review because basically we we're just spending your money. Uh, on something that basically we've approved as a restaurant with much more intense um, usage than 30 to 4 people during the course of a, f what, 15-hour day. Yes, sir. Okay. No problem with it. All right. Thank you, Mo. Th does anyone in no. yeah. on the public want to weigh in? Anyone out in Zoom land? Any? Not beating the walls down. Okay. No, no. I'll take a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion to grant the waiver from site plan review and approve the relocation of Route 146 Fitness to 352 Mansard Road, conditioned on the receipt of all other approvals from all other required permitting authorities, including a certificate of compliance with the Conservation Commission. He needs a second. Oh, second. Thank you. Any other comments? I just want to make a comment that there was a uh, notice from the CONCOM appears to be finished. Would like to have Mr. Funari request a certificate of compliance. And there was something about the taxes um, that we do. We're due on November 1st. I guess we must assume they were paid. I don't know yeah. if it's safe to assume that, but um, maybe we should condition upon. Um, so on a condition upon taxes have been paid. Taxes yeah. due on, oh, yeah. The did first did you guys, month. I included the tax form that was required? Uh, this is the property taxes on the, on the unit. As I, of. I, I did, I think I did, and got that from uh, the Funari side. 
Okay. And I pass that in to Lynn. I could show it to you if you wanted it. Uh, sure. Let me grab that for you real quick. Well, and were there we any other a, conditions? We got a document from the tax collector. That's what we go by. When you put on the agenda that well, taxes are due in a couple yeah, of days. Put on the agenda because we don't want to go through a process and then come to find out you owe taxes. Why don't we just, just for the sake of we'll condition it anyway. How's that? Uh, Certificate of Good Standing, dated 921. Why don't we just condition it yeah. if that's okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The last one would have been due this week. No, no, it's not for So we have two conditions? What do we have? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, we we have a motion. We're voting, yeah? I am I. Okay. Bill Talcott, I. Okay, Bob Lodges, yes. Mike Gagan, I. Wally Baker, I. With two conditions. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for Eric, coming Eric, come on, I. All right, Eric. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Thanks, gentlemen. Eric, good luck, everybody. Uh, Thank you very much. Need good luck. Close. We have to close this. No, it wasn't a hearing. Public. It wasn't a hearing. Okay. okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. The next one is uh, sixteen. Um, huh? Thanks, guys. Yep. We have an additional action on sixteen car. Mm -hmm. Endorse covenant and plan. Which is right here. Right there. Someone here to represent the applicant. No, uh, this is probably not. It's just a retreat lot. We just uh, have to sign it. Yep. We can sign it after. I mean, after the meeting. We have yeah. to make a more. I make a motion to endorse the covenant dated mm -hmm. is it 1031 23 and plan dated 10 8 23, okay. showing one retreat lot at 16 Carr Street. Okay. Second. Second by Wally. Okay. Call the roll call. Bill Talcott, aye. Bob Lodges, aye. Mike Gagan, aye. Holly Baker, aye. Okay. Erica McCollum, aye. All right, Erica. Hey, hey, she is. Cool. It will do that. Great. Okay. Um, I need someone to approve the minutes for October 23rd. So moved. Second. Yeah. Okay. Bill Talcott, aye. Bob Lodges, aye. Mike Gagan, aye. Holly Baker, aye. Done. Erica McCollum, I. Okay. Uh, there are no filings. Uh, there's no board business that I know of. Um, site visit reports, I don't see any. We did, we did, we did get a few from Graves um, for Unified Parkway. Yep, in the back. Uh, but they want. I know they'll be on file and on. They're online. Uh, the pictures of them. But are they in a package? I didn't see yes. them like in the back. Yep. yep. Are they clean? Yep. Did we uh, pass, pass the green sheet after the minutes? <laughs> they kind of sneak it in there somewhere. Based yeah. upon visual observations, only the work observed today appeared to be in consistent with the approved plans. Yeah. There was one piece where he had a picture of. Uh, the erosion wheels on the southern side of Swama 9B3A have worsened. So it is something that he's tracking and will. Unify. Unify. There's. Uh, Pretty amazing. I did drive by Unified the other day. It's a big one. Yep. Yeah. And um, hope they have tenants. And the uh, roadways on Boston Road seems to be coming along. I don't. Um, I think it's about what I envisioned. Well, the roadway there is is excellent. What they've done, but uh, the National Grid hasn't got the poles out, and that that is a big problem. That's a big problem. There are at least three. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we did get an additional letter because they want to be open in January, and they're not sure when National Grid's going to get these poles out of the way. And National Grid managed to get a pole last week out of the way in the middle of Providence, the Providence Road exit. 
entrance. Oh, okay. So that I saw. I remember seeing that. But so that one's gone. So I don't know. Um, yeah, for, the, so for I, them to use the site, you know. Right. I did see the email from uh, Unified about the matter, but I don't yeah. see it in our packet in front of us. Uh, oh. But unless you see it, I just maybe oh, skipped I over it. I did read it online about it. Um, Do they have a they tenant? Were, they, what they were trying to say is they are going to be coming in and looking um, to potentially get um, a temporary waiver on what they need to have done before they open up because built the, the building three is ready to hopefully be opened in December. Which it has a tenant? Possibly. Well, no, they're, they're the tenant for building yeah, three, that's so that's the already tenant. set. Um, right. But they're looking to get occupancy and some of the conditions, you know, was that that piece would be finished, yeah. and they say it's going to be six to eight weeks after the utilities remove the poles and move remove them. Uh, hmm. So they're going to be in there, and wow, that's what again. That's the plan as of now. But again, there isn't. Do you see have it, Wally? I don't yeah, know. I've if, got oh, a, you do I have it. it out so I could read it because I couldn't read it online. Okay. Uh, let me well, see it real quick. I'm sorry. Well, the other thing is, they said they they probably will come in here in December looking for a CO. That's what that's where they are, right? Oh. And then, of course, they have no idea when National Grid will get these poles out of the way. But the parts that they've done are pretty much what I envision. You, know, I you see the you see the walking path, right? And there's an extension of the driveway coming out towards 146. They also noted in this letter that no tr no trucks can take a left turn coming out of there. Oh, okay, which was one of our complaints about going down to the Providence Road intersection. Uh, yeah, they seem, you know, it's, okay. it's pretty detailed and seems pretty complete. Mm -hmm. They referred back to various things that we had talked yep. about. So basically, what they're saying is they were hoping to have it all completed before occupancy, but due to the inability to fully construct the improvements caused by utility poles not being relocated, UGPC is requesting to construct a temporary condition whereby full vehicle and truck access can be maintained in and out of the parkway while the poles are still there. They've kind of created a new temporary plan for the winter where the trucks would be able to come in and out but without it being fully, um, fully, fully constructed as they anticipate it will be. Um, they expect it to be fully completed in the spring of 2024 subject to the utility pole relocation. At which time they'll come back before the board again for one final public hearing on the definitive subdivision plan modifications. So. Give them credit. Yeah. When, so when it looked like they were, I mean, they were simply looking for if we have any strong opposition. And they have plans we can look online and maybe bring up again next meeting. To kind I would, of I would hope out. maybe, uh, I don't know how it works to get National Grid working, oh. but could we... Um, Oh, here we could the, uh, right there. Yeah, maybe we can. Yeah, could, yeah. But the planning speak. board, can we weigh in? Uh, yeah. Can we reach out to National Grid and say we have a business? We well, the town has reached out on their behalf. Yeah. So. Keep keep squeaking. Yeah. You know, but I mean that's we have someone online that wants to speak. Oh, well, okay. You know, oh, I'm sorry. You might want to open it on. Go ahead. Welcome aboard. Good evening. Uh, thank you, everyone. Vinod Kalikiri with uh, VHP, uh, representing the applicant uh, okay. that, that you're discussing. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, we also have Frank uh, from Unifair as well, who's who's online. Uh, and essentially, the last item on the agenda is essentially what what I think you were discussing. It's the uh what we would characterize as the temporary conditions of the intersection of uh, boston road and unified parkway until such time that that national grid relocates uh the pole so as as you mentioned we did prepare uh, a plan showing temporary conditions for the roadway uh jeff walsh graves uh reviewed that information and then had him review it and in fact uh Jeff Walsh and Mac, Matt Pekarski from the project team uh, met in the field last Friday to actually walk these areas uh, with the plans to make sure that Jeff was on board. And I believe there's email communication from Jeff back to Jen uh, confirming that 
he was in agreement with with this temporary solution that's that's been proposed by the project team. He did mention that uh, he would recommend the installation of an advance uh, warning sign to trucks telling drivers not to turn left as they're coming out of Unified Parkway uh, to not turn left towards Providence uh, Road and that they all need to make a right turn. We do have a sign on the plan, but I think uh, Jeff was uh, suggesting that we may have an additional sign in, in advance, you know, maybe a couple of hundred feet in advance of the intersection so drivers know before they get to the intersection that they should not be positioning themselves to turn left. So if you have, uh, if, if you would like, I can share my screen and, and show you the geometry that, that Jeff reviewed for Jen. Yeah, that would, that would be helpful if you could, yeah. yes. Sure, excellent. So the, just the, the share final my screen. plans were gonna force you to go right. Yep. Without that being there, they could technically go left all the yep. time until there. There's a pole right there, right now. <laughs> yeah. The island, he's gonna put So if you, uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. So this is uh, just a Google uh, Street View. There's actually a lot more work that's been complete out here than what what this Google Map is showing. This is back from June of this year, but it's it's these two poles that you see here. I mean, this this uh, new asphalt uh, road. That's the new alignment of Unified Parkway. We do have this sort of what you could tell, just this geometry, the curvature that's coming out here. Uh, that would have been that right turn lane coming out onto Boston Road uh, for trucks to make a right turn. But but these poles are still sitting in the street. Uh, our understanding is that, uh, as, as you just read in the letter, uh, the, those poles uh, will likely be moved by, by a national grid by the spring and then six to eight weeks after they're done with the pole relocation, the project team would come out, uh, you know, the contractor would finish the final roadway geometry as, as shown in the approved plans. And then that will be followed by the team, uh, the project team members coming back to the board with, with the final uh, subdivision plan modifications uh, that, that we had uh, offered a promise to do that before occupying the building, but because again, because of the utility pole relocation issue, we are not able to complete the final geometry here, uh, and also consequently not update the the subdivision plan at this time. Uh, occupancy for building three uh, is scheduled for December, so there will be that time lag, uh, I guess, over the winter when the building is available and and is is going to be used by Unified. Uh, but the geometry that we are looking at, the sort of the temporary condition that we are looking at is it is what you see on the screen here. Um, so if I can explain this. Uh, so that's Boston Road, uh, Galaxy, past the Market 32 is to the left of the site. Unified Parkway is, is coming off of Boston Road right here. Uh, again, the, the pole that, that's in question is, is sitting right here in this little uh, island that we created. So the plan is to create this temporary geometry that keeps Boston Road in its current alignment, one lane in each direction, uh, with, with you know the extra widening that's needed for the final condition has already been done. The pavement has already been widened, but it would not be available for traffic until the pole is removed, because obviously, you know, you would want to have this pole with the guy wires and everything sticking out in the new pavement. So we would lock that off with, with a series of barrels and traffic coming, uh, I mean, traffic control devices uh, with temporary pavement markings that you see in red. The red dots themselves are, are barrels, weighted barrels that would be sitting along the edge of the road uh, to keep, essentially, the traffic would follow the existing uh, two lanes that are on Boston Road, eastbound, westbound, and then trucks are able to turn into Unified Parkway. And when they're coming out of Unified Parkway, they'll be directed to make a right turn through here out of the Boston Road. And so, again, we work. Yep, go ahead. I'm sorry, but I, so it does look on that plan, though, that the, the vehicles leaving Unified Parkway will be directed to go right almost, though, right? I mean, it 
Yeah. Well, so essentially the way you have, I mean, this doesn't show the full roadway geometry going in, but uh, essentially if you assume that these two lines here, uh, the, the black line here, and then the black line here is essentially the unified parkway geometry that's already been constructed. Yep. What you see in red is the temporary condition. So as you're coming in the single lane down unified parkway, at some point in this area where you see the word only. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. okay. That's where it will start opening up into a right turn lane and a left turn lane. Okay. The right turn lane would come here to a stop line, temporary stop line. And then the traffic, once uh, there is a gap in traffic, they would enter Unified Parkway. There would also be a left turn pocket, but that's the left turn we talked about. With the, the, there'll be a sign uh, that tells drivers that tractor trailers cannot make a left turn coming okay. out of Unified Parkway. Because it does look, though, if a tractor trailer did get into that other lane, at that point, they'd have to go left, right? I mean, if, if it came too far down, you know, yeah. yeah, but I think that was why Jeff Walsh was suggesting that we have an advanced warning sign right. here. This lane, the, the single lane that's on Unified Parkway will just end up being this right turn only lane. Oh, okay. And then we'll drive it so that the left turn pocket opens up in the right lane. So if a truck driver, I guess they shouldn't be turning left when they see the sign, but if they had to make a left turn, they would have to consciously switch over okay. from the right turn lane to a left okay. turn lane. So they wouldn't be entering the left turn lane automatically. They would be in the right turn lane to begin with. And uh, there'd be the sign. And I believe there was another, uh, based on the conversations with uh, Jeff Walsh, the design already called for about 200 feet upstream on Unified Parkway. Uh, the project team was already planning to have this sign that says all trucks, no left turn ahead, and then the arrow indications indicating how to access the regional highway system, which is all right turns. Uh, you know, with uh, so with this sign, this, this big sign that will be sitting on Unified Parkway about 200 feet before they get to the intersection, and then this sign that would be actually on this island, the temporary island, uh, we expect that there'd be enough warning that's that's provided to uh, to truck drivers that, that they should be making a right turn. So it, and again, just to follow up, it, it appears then this temporary roadway, the biggest issue would be uh, the trucks coming on one for coming from one forty six or either way on Boston Road, like taking a left in the unified. There's one lane, so cars will be held up behind them as they turn left. And is it opening for them and coming both ways, really? I mean, well, ultimately, we'll we have an extra lane to turn. Right. I mean, so the original design obviously involves widening all the way out here to this back line. But since the pole is in the road, uh, we wouldn't be able to use that left turn right. today. Yep. But that's the reason why we are only looking for this uh, arrangement for building three only. So building three is the smallest of the three buildings. And when you look at the traffic study and the traffic numbers, the, the volume of vehicles for building three overall cars and trucks is a relatively small number. And then within that, the trucks is even a much smaller number. So, you know, it's really until you get to that, the larger building one, uh, which is not, not something that we are looking to obviously uh, advance at this point. It's, it's only at that time that you actually have enough traffic going in and out of unified parkway to justify that additional left turn left turn lane so uh again you know the, uh, the entering trucks for the first several months i would say two to three months i believe uh unified will be stocking up and and do, doing the interior work and loading within the within the building itself they're not going to ramp up to their full operations of that building on day one once they get get the certificate of occupancy they have a lot of work to do uh to actually ramp up to their real uh, operations. So uh, we expect that by the time that happens, you know, the you know the spring 2024, we would, we would have the work completed and, and the final geometry in place with the left turn lane and, and the shared use path and all the other features that, that you had previously reviewed. Okay. I mean, I would just do the chair, you know, my comments on that. I mean, I think 
Well, it's a little unfortunate. I can see some concerns on the traffic of, you know, having to stop while a tractor trailer goes into it left or coming right into it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I do think they've, you know, put a lot of effort into getting this building opened and want to start using it. And if it is only a few months, I mean, I tend to think I would be in favor of that type of uh, temporary plan. So just my, my thoughts. On it. It's going to be an inter interesting uh, winter if we have snow right. and where the barrels with <laughs> barrels and uh, what with, with I it have I mean, someone good on the highway department <laughs> it, it did appear though and I get in some of the readings I read online I thought the highway had looked at it and they felt they can do it be okay the snow I mean, you can correct me if you know that yeah the note off yeah. lot well, of the, 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 the barrels have been there two months yeah. yeah already yeah uh, you know they're half a they're half on I'm just the, thinking what's going to happen when it snows. Where's the snow? The, 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 well, on the side. It will be an interesting stay tuned. dynamic. <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah. Well, Big piece of equipment. I predict, I predict a barrel, um, not, not to go off on a tangent, but when they put in the roundabouts on uh, 140 in Sterling off of 190, there's two roundabouts on that, they had a pile of barrels <laughs> that got hit off to the side, it was basically a barrel dump. Yeah. There were dozens of them. <laughs> and they just put in a new one, and they took the old one, and they put it over there. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, it's shame. It's a learning curve. All because of uh, a double, actually, it's a double pole. So not only is that one pole, it's a double pole in the middle. It's, it's just a shame we what? all have to jump through these hoops because of that. But, but no, if I could just jump in one last question. Um, I thought in the reading that even though you can't finish out those extra roadways fully until the poles are down. I thought you might pave four or five feet in to make it a little bit wider. Am I, did I not read that? I... No, no, actually, what, what the thing is, it's actually the, the widening is already being done. Like, right. you know, this, yeah. this it's, that's about where if you're out there, you'll see that all of this area is already paved. Mm -hmm. So the, the expectation of the plan is to keep the two existing lanes that are out there today for eastbound and westbound travel, and then set the barrels five feet away okay. from from the edge of the travel lane, so that you know it's not right on the edge of the lane itself that you have an extra five foot buffer, and that's where you know if the snowplow is going through, there's an extra five feet that the snowplow is not going to be hitting the barrels, and there's some little room for you know if a little snow gets pushed off into that area. Uh, that that it's not pushing against the barrels. There will right. still be a okay. five foot gap. Okay. Um, Thank, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's an active project site. So obviously the project team, Walsh and others from the the contractor site, they would be out here. And the expectation is that this is a temporary condition that they would be monitoring closely. It's not that you know it would be all shut down and everybody would leave. It's it, this would be monitored on a regular basis. And if something needs to be put back and, you know, a couple of barrels get blown away or something, they'd, they'd come back and restore them right away. But, but you know, we made sure that there is the same amount of lane width out there today uh, or that will be out there in the future in this temporary condition, Boston Road, that there is today. So we are not narrowing uh, the lanes any more than what they are. So this, this red line here and the black line, the light black line that you see along these edges, those are the temporary and the existing uh, edge of road. So we are not uh, narrowing at all. We're just keeping the pink lines where the white lines are located today. So traffic would have the same uh, lane widths, eastbound, westbound. It's just that you know we'll have these barrels uh, five feet away, defining uh, the fact that you know they're, they're the vehicles are traveling through our work zone. That's that's really the intent of the of the barrels. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No. We have. Uh, I I don't find any abutting town notices of interest, and I have no so correspondence. Just, just to follow up quick to, on the, what we're talking about, are we we're not really taking any vote on this. Are we just offering our opinions tonight on this potential plan? I'm not sure what, how it was left of whether they're waiting for. A, a vote by us to say it's okay this temporary plan or not i don't know um, i thought they're just informing us they yeah. okay but no do you um are you looking for any guidance for us on this or just explaining well uh, my understanding is that this is an 
you know, an administrative action. You know, we we wanted to uh, present to the board that that there will be a temporary condition, and that because of this temporary condition, the fact that the certificate of occupancy will likely be issued in December, that there will be uh, those couple of conditions that previously said that all of the final geometry and the final subdiv uh, subdivision plan, everything should be in place by the time of occupancy. Uh, you know those those would happen at a later date, possibly spring uh, spring of uh, 2024. But uh, yeah, to my knowledge, there isn't any uh, action or an approval that that the team is seeking. Okay, okay. just want to check. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Thank you. Thanks for informing us, yeah. keeping thank, us up to date. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for so. coming. Thank you. Okay, make a move to adjourn. Second. Bill Talcott, aye. Bob Largest, aye. Mike Gagan, aye. Holly Baker, aye. And it's 8.15. Eric McCollum, aye. Hey. hey. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Recording stopped. I think these are the, this little memo on the thing is, I'm going to call that the Bob notice. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I did that, but it works. <laughs>